When I first started making these screencasts, I thought that making the actual recordings was going to be pretty straightforward, but it turned out it wasn't, not for me anyway. It took me a while to find a method that I found comfortable as well, and now I would like to share my method and how I arrived at it. When I started, I just talked into my headset while going through the tutorial steps on the screen. This did not work well for many reasons, but mainly because I was bad at talking and recording at the same time. Then I tried recording the video first and recording the audio after that. That worked out sort of okay, but caused a lot of syncing problems and much extra work. What I do now is, first I write the script for the tutorial. Being fairly certain that everything is in place, I record the audio using Audacity. I do a bit of touching up, removing unnecessary pauses and breathing sounds, and usually amplify the sound a bit. I use an Audio-Technica USB microphone for making the recording, but cheaper ones work well too for recording speech. Using a good microphone instead of a headset goes a long way to make a screencast sound more professional. A shock mount is also good to have, because otherwise the microphone will likely pick up vibrations through the desk. For recording the video, I use Cam Studio Recorder with the Cam Studio Lossless Codec. I'm not really happy with how Cam Studio Recorder works, but I have yet to find anything better. I use it with a fixed region set to 854 times 480 pixels, basically a 16 to 9 ratio. This resolution works nicely for YouTube videos. I prefer 480 lines instead of 720 to keep things readable. I keep the playback rate at 20 frames, but I don't think that any particular frame rate is better. The only thing is that the max file size is 2 GB, so if you plan to make a long continuous recording, you might want to keep the frame rate low. I record the audio separately, so I don't need an audio track with the video. I don't know if other recorders have this, but LabVIEW becomes sluggish and unresponsive after a while during recording. Closing and restarting Cam Studio solves this. It's not a problem, but it is annoying, and that's why I would prefer a different recording program but I haven't found anything as good yet. While recording video, you may want to turn off clear type anti-aliasing or similar text enhancements. Text in my finished videos has color artifacts, which I think comes from clear type, but for some reason I can't turn clear type off on my computer. I think it's an issue with my graphics drivers. Once I've gotten a few video clips together, it's time to start putting them in order and match them to the audio. For this I use the video sequence editor in Blender. It's a surprisingly competent editor, even though many seem to be turned off by the user interface. The only problem I've had is that some compression formats don't work well when cutting and trimming clips but the Cam Studio codec works just fine. In Blender, I switch to the video editing layout and switch out the graph editor for the properties window. There's an image preview window in the video sequence editor residing here, and here's the sequence editor proper. Down here is the timeline window, mainly for playback. The default setting is that a render will be displayed in the image editor, but I want to keep the user interface as it is, so I'm changing this. I want to set the resolution to match my video clips. The frame rate though is more a matter of taste. 
I actually like to keep the rate a bit higher to make the tutorial feel faster paced. Then it's time to set the output. Choose a place and a name for the video. For the file format, I think any of these four should work equally well, but I choose MPEG for no particular reason. I want to have RGB output, and in the encoding panel I just got, I choose AVI with the PNG codec and PCM audio format. This way I have some compression, but it is lossless. All these numbers are inconsequential to the output. Once everything is put together, I press the animation button and then all that's left is to upload the result to YouTube. There's plenty of tutorials about the video sequence editor if you want to learn more. Thank you for watching.